Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day two of the International 2017. We've got Hellraisers, formerly Planet Dog, taking on Execration. Execration 1 and 3 after the opening day, Hellraisers 1 and 1. Lumi, thoughts on the matchup? Thoughts on these teams uh, as we look towards the, the meat of the group stage over the next couple days? Do you see either team being a dark horse to finish top four? And if not, why not? So... Uh, let me speak on each team individually. Um, Execration, a team that I know much more about. I, I don't think they're top four potential in terms of finishing in the groups. Uh, yesterday, the games, the, the one game that we casted of them, they, they looked relatively sloppy. Um, they had a close game, but close will not cut it here. Uh, and unless they kind of just evolve very rapidly, I, I don't think they will. Uh, Hellraisers, I know very little uh, about. I've only seen only a couple of replays of them. So I can't say for sure, but from what I've seen, if 33 could step up on the plate and carry from the offlane, then they have a good shot. Uh, one thing that Execration to me isn't exactly too strong at is isolating one player and saying that we're going to shut you down. And I think Hellraisers have the individual talent to actually carry a game off the mid, off the offlane. And uh, let's see if they're going to do that once or twice here today. Well, are this this game will be shrouded in darkness, it <laughs> yeah. appears. We've got a, a hidden tusk shadow and an invisible clockwork. The Riki clock, it's a new hybrid that the frog has been concocting. That seems in his really laboratory. broken. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the names at the bottom, guys, as the, the light descends now. And for a moment, you see the in all her glory. So Quop does get picked up here. It's an old SEA staple for a while. This was probably, I would say, the most picked mid hero. Uh, especially with you know, certain other heroes often being prioritized for bans from game to game. Uh, as of late, Queen of Pain seems to have fallen off, at least in the small sample size of games I've cast yep. and watched here at TI. It's not the popular pick it once was. Why is that? Um, I think people are picking it too early. She does, like, even though she's a stereotypically a very strong laner, she does have certain problematic matches. Think of Viper, OD, things like that. And I think teams are just picking her a little, little bit too early. Now, for the point of Execration, they pick Queen of Pain and they don't run a mid. They don't have to run a mid. That's the strength for, for the pick for them. I've seen them run it as an off lane for, for Jay, Raging Potato. Uh, I've seen them run a safe lane. It's actually very common for Execration to pick three position two heroes. Because they really have three position two players, really, in respectively one, two, and three roles. And they do run it like that. So even though this is a queen pick, they could be extremely flexible in terms of where they put her and dodge a problematic matchup. With that said though, DK is going to be, I guess, the, the matchup on the other side for now. If they are comfortable with the Queen versus DK, they could put her mid, but they again, they could swap her around. Yeah, Dragonite Clockwork for Hellraisers, a ton of control early on here. Great pickoff potential. They've already got their objective taker, at least as far as towers go. So feels like a solid opening for them. And, you know, with the clock, he was really rising in popularity as well. Another support that, uh, well, I, I say support, some teams were running him as an offlaner, but I think where he really started to you know, make his claim to fame was often with the Shadow Fiend shenanigans. You can mm. see the the cogs giving Shadow Fiend a bunch of early souls, mitigating a lot of his weaknesses. Also, sometimes the clock would even just help support his lane to ensure he doesn't get pressured to gank too early. But uh, now we're seeing clock kind of a la carte, not necessarily with anything around him. And sometimes we even do see him venturing into the offlane territory. Yeah, the funny thing is that people started playing Clockwork because they, they kept doing the Shadow Fiend Clockwork cheese and then they realized, it's like, wait, Sh Clockwork's actually like just a good hero. And like you said, they start picking it on its own. But in this tournament, it seems like these kind of traditional four position roamers, your Clockwork, your Nice Stalker actually has been, at least statistically, not doing too well. Um, I think teams are just more prepared in terms of picking things against it. Queen of Pain, for example, here, a good hero to escape the Clockwork gank. And we've been seeing a lot of the supports kind of making the, the adjustment as well. LD, yesterday we saw a lot of Wyvern pick. Wyvern in particular could just fly out of the hogs or just help somebody with co-embrace. So I think that uh, explains why Clockwork as a whole has not been doing too well. Looking at the bands for the second stage now, we see the Lich and the Lycan removed by Execration. For Hellraisers, the Drow, the Ursa. So you mentioned running like three two position heroes. I think Drow fits in very well with that because you can just pick two like tempo controllers like a puck and a quap and yep. all of a sudden they're damage dealers too. So not the route Execration is going to go here. They grab the Void. Void has probably been 
one of the most popular picks thus far, I want to say, in terms of, like, he's not often banned, but he's always sitting there in the second stage, and if he's available, teams are apt to take him. It's just a very safe pick. Like, he has decent lanes, he's hard to kill, he has late-game scaling. I think the only weakness that Void has as a hero is that he, he forces your team to play a certain style. He tends to group up with this team, and we, we saw, I think, EG having a little bit difficulty with that. They last picked a, a Sumail Void yesterday, and they were just ripped apart by Team Liquid's kind of global pushing strategy. Uh, in this game, though, another core that's very easy to escape away from Clockwork, you see the immediate eventual reply to, you know, defensively swap people out. Although currently, as it stands, I think both Clockwork and Dragon I have no problem getting Chrono. They are extremely tanky. Yeah, and it, it's nice to see the bench pick from Hellraisers. I personally feel like teams have not really been giving the Void a whole lot of respect. Like, we have seen a lot of Void picks with no counter picks attempted. Right. Oftentimes, when teams are taking Void, it's when the other team has already taken what look to be their two supports. Uh, and then they don't go for anyone else who can get a save off in the Chrono. Like, the support Naga was something we used to see a lot of. Uh, the Venge, obviously, you mentioned. Uh, even Dazzle has been an okay reply to a Void pick in the past, but... Yeah, we haven't really been seeing that so much, so Hellraiser's just countering him head-on. Uh, and of course, Venge generally fits in great with the push strat, Aye. and that is what we're going to get. That's another with counter. The Dragonite and the Pugna. Yeah, Pugna, I believe, has a 100% win rate, sample size 5, so not the not the greatest. That's a pretty decent sample size, but yeah, it's not, you know, huge. But... Well, here's the thing, right? All of the Pugnas we've seen are, are ones that dominate the mid lane. You have a Dragonite already selected. Oh, there, there's a one game we casted where Pugna was the safe lane, right? Yes, there was a safe lane Pugna that was... Was that LGD? Forever Young? Or... I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think so. I think that was LFY playing it. Although I'm not. It escapes me. It's 24 hours ago, LD. <laughs> Senility is kicking in. But uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of Pugna. He's been very successful. And we have seen him in multiple roles, be it mid be it safely and those are the main two uh, i have seen support pugna in the past uh with varying results i feel especially in the support role he's extremely boomer bust because if your team starts losing he's squishy and he just feeds constantly but if you have a good start uh, then he can be a potent ally by your side like sometimes where teams would pick lashrak just as a support mainly for edict you know to push towers sure uh now it feels like pugna kind of fills those shoes more and more yep Pugna in this game, the crab is going to allow you to be that save. You're talking about things that you could do against Void. Well, here's another thing, right? You could decrep Void or whoever that's getting targeted. And uh, it helps out against the Witch Doctor damage output from the Death Ward as well. So Pugna definitely a very strong pick. It, although I want to say the, I, I think the ward from Pugna himself, I don't think it's going to have a huge impact. It's going to be more or less uh, an annoyance to execration but it's not gonna shut down some big spell casters it's like so, it's it's a little weird like not actually seeing the hero portraits i never i never realized how much i used them to kind of like you know even with the new ui it's still you know you still it's visually somewhat similar to the old one right like i'm so used to just looking at them to like feel what the lineup looks like and now, now I'm like, you gotta look to, at like, the, read names. the names and then think about the heroes <laughs> throw me for a loop man i guess the artist in dota 2 has done a great job right yeah they, they have yeah. associated that that portrait with what the hero does and everything so or maybe I'm just a very visual person. Sure. Is. But yeah, uh, so I mean, you look at Execration, they've got this big wombo combo, right, built around the Chronosphere. Uh, do they double down on that, or do we see them pick up something that doesn't rely on it so much? Like, as far as that goes, OD, perhaps, is someone who can dump a lot of damage in Chronosphere. He's been quite unpopular lately. Lena, another option, uh, who's been more in vogue. Uh, you're going to be facing a Dragonite mid, uh, so it could be the Quap there. Uh, and then the question is, is it a safe lane void, an off lane void, or they could, you know, do something different with the Queen of Pain, like you mentioned, put the void in the off lane. Hell, put the void mid like EG did. <laughs> you really don't know right now. You don't, you don't. I don't expect that from Execration. I think it's more likely an off lane or safe lane void, um, and not a mid void, but <laughs> that's the one thing I'm pretty confident about in this draft, but you never really know. I've also seen Jay play Tusk as a th three position Tusk. I don't think that's very common. And we're going to get the Shaker, and this sh should be the... Core Shaker, right? Yeah, it should be Core Shaker. So off lane Shaker, safe lane Void, mid Queen of Pain. Not too many combos for the Chronosphere. It's mostly just Death Ward and perhaps Gasonic Wave, I guess. But uh, a lot of good stuns, a lot of long range coming out from Execration. Is there a particular draft that you favored, even though you don't see the portraits <laughs> that well? <laughs> um, 
So the thing I really dislike about Execration's draft is they don't take objectives well. They don't take Roshan well. They don't take towers well. I think teams who don't pick a hero, at least one hero that is good at that, be like a Pugna, a Dragon Knight, you know, um, Terror Blade, you know, something uh, are generally at a disadvantage. So I like Hellraiser's better because if they have a good fight, they can convert it into something tangible. Whereas I feel like for Execration, they have to win like two, three fights in some cases before they can start taking those objectives. So uh, I, I favor Hellraiser's a bit there. I think they are the stronger team for me from the amount of like the games I have seen of both teams. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely favoring Hellraiser's based on that, but you know, Execration has the skill, they just are very inconsistent, and so I don't know which execration is That's the show thing, up. yeah. It's it's inconsistency. I, I think both teams are fairly similar when they're on their A game, which is I don't know if execration is on their A game. So well we'll see how the game pans out. I do agree with you though, execration when they're taking towers it's because they're they have a fat void and have a fat queen of pain. If their early games don't go well enough then well nobody's gonna be fat and they're gonna be struggling. Alright, uh, apologies for stuff here, so just Come on, LD. Get it together. I'm, I'm trying, Lumi. Don't stress me. J4 and uh, Lumic. Ooh, great fissure block coming across the river. The shard's going to come through as well. They do not have an orb of venom here, but the right clicks, especially with the boots first, and now they're going to block him a little bit. J4 will be giving the first blood, and uh, the five position, or rather the four position captain for the team picks it up. Yeah, they wanted to set up shop around the bounty room, but. Execration, a pretty fearsome level 1 squad just with the Tusk and the Earthshaker. Uh, the rest may be not that good at level 1, but those two alone provide you so much control and options that easy for them to take that little skirmish. I think Hellraiser now sees like four heroes on the bottom. They could send a Clockwork up top and just secure the rune here and take it away from the Void. So even though they give up the first blood, I do believe the, the rune result should be still 2-2. Two two. So... Walking towards it, trying to get the rune, but okay, Cass is gonna come through. It's gonna be a bouncing bounce, and now he jumps back out. But they're gonna chase him down. The orb of venom is available on Milan. They're gonna hit him a couple of times. Cogs available. Trap Nando back in. He's gonna hit the cogs a little bit, trying to bounce himself out. That poor man shield. He is very tanky. Just easily sustains the damage. There was also a skirmish happening bottom simultaneously, and Nando just tickled by it all. We'll have to heal up. Use some tangos. Of course, not going to be that much fun as a Void having to last hit in a lane against Clockwork. Cogs will constantly be chafing you. So it is going to be 2-1-2 two, two setups uh, for Execration. And it looks like the Earth Spirit of Milan is going to be doing a bit of roaming here early on. Earth Spirit roam uh, for a while I don't think have been too successful in terms of converting in the past. I, I think the last patch has really slowed them down as a hero. What in particular do you think slowed them down? I think people just got better uh, playing against them. And also, the heroes that are picked are also more resistant to those type of ganks. For example, Queen of Pain here. You see a row coming in, doesn't care. It's until Earth Spirit gets to level 2, and he generally has trouble finding the level 2. Kaiser, with a shard not coming in, but still, a sizable amount of harass. James is going to have to blink away across the ravine. Salve up, so. Good old 2v2 here in the mid lane. Already DK, 7 and 0. Oh. Tiro CS is like a... When's the last time you seen a DK lose his lane, Lumi? I don't remember. Even Gods won his lane. <laughs> oh, Gods is... I don't know, the Australian dragon, so... <laughs> it's the Australia dragon. Yeah. I've seen this pirate wish up. Yar, baby. What's your favorite pirate line, Rumi? Are you big on, on no, pirate No, not, not, not very good. Shiver pirates. me timbers! I'm, I'm, That's a good one. I'm I don't even know what it means. <laughs> it sounds cool. <laughs> Bottom lane here, we're going to see a couple of nukes flying out. Swift ending, not letting loose that decrep. Might have actually uh, connected it into another blast. Whenever I see pirate, like modern day pirates, I kind of just forget that it's not about the wooden legs and eye patch. Like, they just bore your plane and then they mess you up. The modern pirates, you know? <laughs> yeah, modern pirates are not as, as cool to, as the pirates. I think, you know, I don't think people really like the idea of the actual like pirate. We'll see 3-3 three, three, diving RR, yep. getting that kill, but it's going to beat the void his life away. Probably think, not hugely worth. I, I think it, it, it's okay. Like, 
Yeah, sure, you give Void the solo kill, but let's not forget that he's gonna get farmed regardless. The fact that you get solo kill experience on a support propels you so much faster to level 6. And for offlane clockwork, all you care about is that level 6. True. I, he is relatively close here with Nando. Yeah. So the numbers certainly backing you up there. I think for like a farming offlane, let's say your LC or I don't know, let's say Doom that we saw uh, from a couple of teams picking up, maybe not worth a trade, but for a hero that's more caring about levels, I think it's definitely okay. So. Kaiser having a great start here in mid, and the Pugna having a fantastic start for Swift Denny bottom. So basically, the Siege engines for Hellraisers, and they've got two of them, are off to the races, which would suggest that Execration are going to be facing some very early tower pressure. Uh, I guess that uh, that kind of segues nicely into this question, Lumi, of overall thoughts on the two lineups and what their respective goals are as we hit the four minute mark. You kind of mentioned what Hellraiser wants to do, right? They have a very early kind of pushing style lineup. They want to be fast. They want to get towers early. Now for Execration, they repel them with a Chronosphere and get kills off of it. So it really comes down to Nando and how he uses the Chrono. If he let's, let's like one Riff and they don't get a kill or two and they lose two towers off of that, they're going to be really far behind. Oh, good. Outplay there by Execration. Fantastic shards coming in from Chemo. And this was what we saw yesterday that was lacking for Execration. I mean, was they weren't able to find those early kills. Chemo spent a lot of time moving, and he was often moving uh, even with RR, and it was all very unsuccessful. So yep. this is definitely different. Uh, I, I guess perhaps part of it was that there was a Bristleback uh, mid, who's obviously. It was very, also a glitch in those games. Queen of Pain comes in, great play from Milan, silent stun, everything, but he just blinks away. And all of a sudden, it's going to be the Tusk. Don't tell me the Tusk gets out here too, he's going to try, but doesn't roll very far. Chemo though, breathe fire, we'll shut go. him down. Oh, which Doctor ports in as well. Yar! <laughs> go. That was the least enthusiastic pirate. <laughs> Look, I have no pirate training. So like... Training? I don't have training. I've watched, I've watched Pirates of the Caribbean, I don't think that guy qualifies either. Well, at least you watch it. I haven't seen it. You haven't even watched it. I've heard the, the, the theme, the music theme. It's lit. Another jump in here by James onto Kaiser. As Dragonite continues to get bullied, pressured heavily. And the dual lane appears to be paying off as he's brought down once more. Late rotation from Milan, but unable to save his prized Dragonite. Goes down again. I mean, you say that Dragonite rarely loses the lane, and to to the degree he's not like he's doing well in the CS department, right? But he's a full level behind a Queen of Pain now, and I think Queen of Pain hitting level six is going to be able to pressure the DK more with the rotations coming in. I think this one might be one of those rare games where DK will start to struggle. Yeah, it's oftentimes you just see teams are content to trade farm. Yep. 3-3 three, three, finds solo, solo kill, on kill the void. Top. I mean, play. I did say that three three just carries from the off lane, but. You just don't expect Clock to do this much. He's level 6, he's gonna shrine back up, he doesn't even have to go back to base, and all of a sudden, if you look at heroes like Witch Doctor, and even Shaker and, and Tusk, they could just die. Middling. They committed dive for Kaiser, wanna finish him off, Dragon Knight will end up going down. Now the Queen of Pain all committed, 3-3 comes in with the phase boot, the battery assault, Ooh. the hook shot gets the kill! Huge plays, first the Void taken down on one side of the map, and now, Finding the Queen of Pain elsewhere. So two BP cores deleted by 3-3's individual play. Wow, that's just impressive. Well, those are also two heroes that normally you're like, eh, I don't really care about clockwork. You know, just time walk out of the cogs, blink away, but times it right with the hook shot. Very patient. Also, this is probably your time to shine while the time walk is only level two and the Queen of Pain blink only level one. So those yep. are long cooldowns for now. We'll see. I'm, I'm gonna just follow 33. I, I just feel like he's gonna be the playmaker. The Hellraiser needs to extend the early game dominance. Making a big commitment here for Raging Potato, though. Hit him with the Nether Blast, then getting him with the Life Drain. He just waltzes away. The rocket Ooh. comes through, just barely missing. And the Boulder also not gonna connect, so Raging Potato, at least for now, making it out. Beware of those follow up boulders. Unfortunately, only a, a level 1 rocket flare on 33, so he can't fire it across the map and ensure and kill. I mean, this is the preferred build as a clockwork if you feel like you have any potential to do damage in your lane. Like, yep. Otherwise, you go into the mid game and you're just a, a weak nuke. It is global, but it's also not that much damage. Whereas the battery assault, I mean, what is it when it's maxed? It's like 700 
your damage or yeah. something, right? You're not supposed to be able to get off all that damage, because when you do, you're just killing pretty much anybody. 33 now rotating. Trying to catch some people out. Void again, you have to somehow bait that uh, jump. It's definitely tough. Yeah, that's not a hero you can count on killing on your lone. I don't really think that's Hellraiser's goal, like to constantly gank or pressure the Void. It should be much more group up with the Dragonite, the Pugna, and just hit towers. So that is what they're trying to do here yep. mid. But they don't have the best creep wave support. Second wave coming in. The Dragon form used relatively bench. early here. And while that's happening, Raging Potato finds the solo kill on the bench, but Tier 1 now about to be under siege. Top lane looks like 33 has started the party. Did force a jump, but does not hook after it. And like you said, in the mid lane, the siege begins. I, I think th they're not looking to pressure any individual hero. Uh, Hellraisers just need to apply pressure as a whole. Whether it's beyond tower or whether it's invading a jungle. I, I like the fact that Hellraiser starts with the mid tower because if you do open up this uh, mid lane, allows clockwork as well as your Venge and your Earth Spirits to actually roam into the jungle and find much more effective ganks. 33 has been sitting top. I expect he's going to move soon. Waits for RR near the. Oh, that's a bounty rune. Freebie. Yeah. That should be a free takedown. That's assault. Catch a couple of hogs. See you later, RR. Another kill. Put him on a killing spree now. Free free having a fantastic start to this game. He did get off the Maledict. Oh, I, I thought it was going to be enough to burn actually some uh, infused raindrop charges. I guess it's only a very low level one. Also, didn't do very much damage either. Yeah. So yeah, HR, their first attempt to push, it's moderately effective. They get the tower down to about a third HP, but I wouldn't say it was super effective, especially considering, like, sometimes you see just a Pugna push alone is enough to take a tier one. Yep. Let alone when you have the Pugna enemy. Probably a poke. Looks like a miss, the silence, and the stun following through. I don't think you actually could get the kill on Nando. Nando jumps off all of the damage. His mana is being burned. Teleport scroll is available. He has one more jump. And, and now it's a level four time long, so you really need the chain stun if you want to bring him down. Ideally, Dragonite with a blink or shadow blade would be a good follow-up to that. Maybe the bench stun, but HR they did not quite bring the numbers. Will not be able to find the kill. One thing that we haven't really mentioned is that oh, mid lane here, they're gonna go on the queen or just defend the Dragonite. Either way, it looks like DK is gonna get trapped in. Sonic Wave. Available and we'll get loose here. Kaiser though, very, very tanky. Oh, that damage from the Pugna almost instantly takes out Kimo. Indeed, will kill him off. Only his sigil there to mark his tomb. You see these players are not really used to playing against Pugna. Uh, he tried to juke around the tree lines, which does absolutely nothing against a life drain. Life drain tracks you through fog, through invisibility. His best play is to just walk as far away in a straight line away from the life drain, which he did not do. I think part of the reason why Pugna is doing so well in this tournament is just that it's just not a common pick. Uh, looks like a commitment here from Nando in the top lane. Drops the Chrono, wants to bring down Milan. Brings him low. Not able to finish him off yet, though. Ooh. And oh, as he's about to roll away. Catches him, gets that crucial bash, and secures the kill. Well, Meebo on the mid lane. HR's persistence will pay off. They take down the tier one. The beauty for them is they might just be able to go for another tower now as there is no Chrono to defend it. 3-3, finding the kill in RR, now jumping in is Nando. This clockwork is extremely durable with the raindrops. Has the stick charge finally going to go down. Meanwhile, it looks like Kaiser may have overstayed his welcome. Needs to back away. James is thinking about pursuit. Won't commit to it. But yeah, Lumi, there is no chrono. And generally, if you're a Puck in the Dragonite draft, that means dream opportunity to start pushing elsewhere. A Puck the low on mana, and Dragonite about to lose his ultimate. So perhaps it's not the window it could have been. Yeah, still a couple of blasts. They are going to wear it down. Looks like we're going to see a Veil of Discord coming out from Pugna. That's something we saw a lot out of the LGDs and LFYs, but it makes a lot of sense. You do pick up a lot of armor, which is going to be decent against Pugna. All about that deep. So you've got Veil, you've got Aetherlands. You combine that with you got Light of the Heaven. Crepify. You've got Light of Heaven. you got some shrines. Oh, you know what? We, we, we could do this too. So let's get in on the action. What's up? What's happening at the shrine? It's 100% HP. I actually just want him to like write a blog and explain what it is. We should actually just walk up to him and ask him why you ping so many shrines. Is it just his like way of promoting himself? He knows 
now all the other He's casting a TI. He, he doesn't need any promotion. He's a TI champion. Does he need more promotion? Some people, I mean, they just crave the spotlight. Okay, Light of Heaven, you're still a great player. From Shackle shots. I still remember. Creation is going for the trade here. They're going to try and take this mid tier one. Trading Cliff available. And they are clustering up top. Pugna marches in and Mando backs away. He does get the play stun here. Oh! Slam through the trees from Raging Potato and now going to be punished in a huge, huge way. Decrepified, blasted, deleted. The Void also on the run. The sounds come through. The Boulder Sesh almost connecting. Mando narrowly dodging death. The tower has fallen. Radiant Tower in the mid lane, meanwhile, it's gonna go down, yeah. no clip. LD, that was so unfortunate for Execration. Jay, Jay had a Blink Dagger. He was sitting oh in the trees. Oh my god, he did? Yeah. Oh, it's he, only 13 minutes, that's a really fast play. He was gonna hit a 4-man Echo Slam, but then just like Terry, he, he saw the Void jumping in there, he's like, okay, let me give vision to my team. And he got him just the second that he was about to blink, and he just echoed the ground. My god, they were, they were about to get absolutely truck uh, dumpstered by, by uh, Jay. That was so unlucky for them. Would it have been enough to kill them? It's. I guess it is I a think max. TP would have came it in. It is a and max so, after yeah. Dog, so yeah, maybe it is. Good swap here by J4. Oh, speaking of big plays, a four hero boulder smash. No big deal, Milan. Mowing them down. They've taken the tier two. So HR now up to a four tower to one advantage. And likely to continue ramping up. Execration gonna feel this map getting very, very claustrophobic in short order. Yep. Very important for Nando just to pick up damage, just like raw damage, and and be able to take advantage of the Chronos here. I love the fact that he's going for his uh, Shadow Blade. I like to see something like Shadow Blade or Yasha into Diffuso. Just anything that makes you pack a punch because it's all about hitting that Chrono, pick off the Venge, pick off the Pugna, things like that. Um, but something that we mentioned during the draft is that there's a lot of counters to the Chrono. The crep, the swap, just being tanky. Boulder smash, hook yeah. shot even to, you know, for some interruption. So, I definitely agree with you there. Creation are going to cluster up in the bottom lane. Well, it wasn't the brilliant blink debut they were hoping for. They do have another shot to set something up here. Good wards to cover that Radiant jungle. And surprisingly, Hellraiser is letting them just take this tower for free. Not even going to try to contest, also not taking their own objectives. So, end of the day, it's not that big of a tower deficit for Execration. Only down two, where it feels like it could be more. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised for the lack of defense as well, because when, you, when you're when you this kind of early kind of pushing team, you want to widen the gap of the tower difference. It doesn't matter if you're good at ticking tower, if you just give up just as many, right? Like, that's what it feels like. Execration does have a big combo team fight, but at the same time, like, you have some really beefy tanks that you can throw in first, right? The Clockwork, the Dragon Knight, you know, if you're you, if you're really worried about it, one of them can soak up a lot of damage, you swap them out, but hold that thought, here comes the Echo! Raging Potato catching out the Dragon Knight, Kaiser will go down, now J4 could be in trouble, they don't have the full squad here, he's gonna take down the Maledict, and a Walrus Punch sends him into the atmosphere. Oh no, coming through, but S33 hooks away, get what? me out of here, baby, he says! Away to safety, and now Swift Ending coming in. They're gonna turn this! Nando not only gonna miss his easy kill, or so he thought, but now giving up his own life, and with the Pugna alive, probably the biggest damage to the remaining in this fight. He could take over. RR getting punished for this. A pathetic totem attempted by Potato, but it will buy time for his comrade to get away, or at least so he hopes. Go on the chase, Swift Ending moving in. They get that decrepit by the blast comes through as well, then. Backing off his creep to not get the life drain going, lost the vision for a second, but now will reclaim it and scores the kill. Still moving forward onto James, oh almost God. dead, a D to the magnetize. One more tick would do it. A little life drain. No, it's not available. Still on cooldown, the blast. James makes it out. Absolute madness here in the jungle, but it all really started to go awry when 3 3 got that beam me up Scotty hook shot for safety. Yeah, and the critical thing is that. Chrono was used, Execration did not win the team fight, and Hellraiser gets to move around the map and start taking down more towers. That tier 2 mid needs to be pressured. I didn't actually realize if your hook has already hit something, it over, like it completes no matter what, even though the Chrono is already there. 
I, 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 is that how it works, or like was the is it just the visual thing? Because the chrono like definitely was on top of him, right? Before he left the space, you know, that I, the bubble I, occupied. I don't even know for sure. Like I gotta watch that play from multiple angles to make sure. This is where you want like the the twenty different camera shots. Yeah, you know. A good way to start the day here, Lumi. I know for sure that if you have a chrono down and clock hooks into it, the stun will hit even and then if the he hero stops, right? the hero will stop at the edge. So it's just kind of just weird. Not 100 percent sure how it works exactly. Yeah, maybe maybe that's only when you're hooking into it. Yeah. Hooking out? I don't know. Not sure. That was the first time I've ever seen a chrono hit someone and then it looks like they just got out anyway without you know something like a swap or a punch hook. Woo! All right. Well, things are going to settle down a little bit now, at least hopefully. Well, you did mention Nando got that Shadow Blade. James is working on his Orchid. Pretty potent pickup against the likes of Earth Spirit, Pugna. Really no solutions as of yet for that Orchid, nor do they have the most natural builders of the Please said solutions. You know, no one who really wants to get a Manta style here. Dragonite is working BKB, towards BB. Yeah. I guess for DK, but he's probably not the one you want to silence usually anyway. It's... Uh, their workaround was like swap defensively. You have maybe get a Yules on the yeah. partner. Clockwork hooks in to make things hard. I'm very interested by the way that Hellraiser is building their items, right? You have a Drums on Clockwork, which is not a too too crazy. And then you have Revenge also working to the Drums. It seems like Hellraiser wants to finish this game and Silence comes in, but the hook as well as the stun misses. They pop the smoke, they pop the dust. They want Nando dead, but Nando just jumps away. He should be fine. I say that though, they're... He's still got Chrono, and coming in as the Witch Doctor, they may actually try to take this fight momentarily. Three there. Queen of Pain with the haste TPing in, or rather a streaming towards the lane, I should say, and the Earthshaker also about to join the party. So Hellraisers, if they want to take this fight head on, they're walking into a full five-man squad and this James closes the distance. That Pugna Ward is about to be brought down. They will isolate, probably finish off 3-3 here, trapped in the trees. Really poor position for a clock to be in and he gets turned into a pile of mechanical rubble. Another pickoff for execration. Hellraisers, just a bit off the mark as far as the timing goes. They slightly missed the silence. Uh, boulder smash combination. Uh, they were just a little bit late with the clockwork hitting the creeps and weren't able to lock them down. Like, they're just not quite hitting their spells to get that void kill. And then they could have backed away, but they decided to chase. And this is the second time that happened, right? They went for the void and they miss out their combo. And void is getting away with, like, not building any defensive item and surviving ganks. As a result, I think Hellraiser has missed their timing window. I don't want to say entirely, but I don't think they've done enough. They, they traded towers for like for free, like without fighting, right? Um, and we're also weren't really taking a, extra towers at that point. They also have gone for mid game items, like you said, uh, and then they're not finding the kills. That's the third point. So yep. that combination of things is, yeah, really changing the complexion of the game. And I, I agree with you that I think right now it numerically it's a slight execration gold advantage, but I think it's more strategically Hellraisers have geared up to dominate this first 25 minutes item wise. And they're not and dominating. They're, yeah. they're not dominating. They're actually losing slightly, which is losing by a lot because of the lineup Middle. and the way they've built. Middle. We're gonna see initiation from Lon. He's gonna get blocked off on the left side. They get the one kill and they're chasing for a little bit more. But on the back line, swift ending gives a swift ending to the witch doctor. He's just done. He's gonna go for raging potato here too. Backup TP in. Our shaker could be in danger. Kaiser gonna bring down Chemo. They've overplayed their hand. It looks like execration need to get the hell out. They've lost already three. Might lose. Wow. If the battery salt was active by 3-3 when he walked into those trees, I think he also gets that fourth kill. Well, a good fight, I guess, uh, for Hellraiser. The one thing that Hellraiser needs to worry about moving forward is that because they grouped up to do those, remember the Pugna, Dragonite push early on in the mid lane, is that their level gain is actually suffering heavily. That team fight just now really helped out. Give them a little bit of a, a spike. Oh, just wanted to farm the wave here. Nando in trouble. Boulder smash. Nukes for the Pugna. Perfect cog to the pushback. Nets them another kill. It looks like he wanted to go for a solo kill on the Pugna. He shadow bladed in, was kind of camping outside the tower. And then he's like, ah, I'm already here. I'll just go hit creeps. But there were four heroes off the map. At least maybe five, and he does get punished for it. Good time. This is going to be the, the last spike that I think Hellraiser has in terms of their lineup being strong. BKB as well as Aghanim Scepter picked up.
on their two respective cores. Gotta make something of it. Take a tier two, maybe think about Roshan, because the game is not gonna go any better the way that Execration's hero is gonna start scaling. Now, it's of course a scary time to go for this push, as they do not have an Aegis, and they're walking into all of Execration's ultimates. Ideally, you want to spread here, at least ensure that there are multiple key heroes caught in that chrono. They are afraid. We've already got one Light of Heaven, so... There's not room for another. Everyone wants to use Light of Heaven. This is the one area where Hellraisers, I guess, are not the best. Like, they're great at taking towers, they're not amazing at taking Roshan. So, perhaps... With the Venge, Dragonite with an armlet, it's okay. But it's not fast enough to just, like, confidently go at it. Jump, chrono. Overcommit here on this clockwork. They're going to silence it. Snowball coming in, and they will drop the chrono as well. The Kong's pushing Nando back. But he's a cheeky little bugger, and he'll just time walk his way back in, get the kill. Yeah, even though the teleport scroll had no chance of completing, by him TPing out, Nando was forced to use the, uh, the chrono. So, pretty good trade in that regards, but. I think it's a really good trade. Now you actually can think about a heavy push. Yeah. Go for the tier two. Dragonite's already on the case. It's not like Clockwork's item progression is likely to have a big impact on the outcome of this game. So. He's got he's got a Yules. It's actually I don't think I've ever seen that before. But it makes sense, right? You're up against an orchid. Yules to set up your cogs. Yeah, sure. You can even Yules to, you know, dodge chrono. If you time it. Right. Ragey Potato does get forced away in this tier two. At long last, gonna fall. Honestly, I thought this would have fallen about 10 minutes ago. Yep. And Hellraiser's just never wanted to commit. And now, like, that, that tower dropping is nice, but it just feels a bit late for what their lineup wants to achieve. So I think they're at a critical juncture here, Lumi. Do they try to re like reassess and take this later, or do they just all in on this next 10 minutes with items and gameplay and I don't try think to they, end the game? I don't think they could take it later, simply because of the items that they went for. Like, if you're trying to go lay as Venge, you pick up, you know, a medallion that helps you do Roche and get objective, objectives. Uh, you pick up, let's say, uh, a Midas on the clockwork and a scale into your early, uh, late late talents and stuff like that. They haven't done that, and they're pretty much all in uh, and try to win the game fast. Also, to kind of augment your points about taking that tier 2 10 minutes earlier, I think the Pugna games that we've been casting, the game's already over by this point. Right. Super has yeah. finished the game even already. If, even yeah. if it's not actually done, like all the lanes are pushed in, they have full control, they've probably taken a lane of Brax. Right. That is certainly not the case here for Hellraiser. We're like this game is just beginning for Hellraiser, unfortunately. Because it looks like it's gonna be execration tanking over the tempo of the game. Yeah, they will finally go back for the Roshan, twenty six minutes in. Seeing a few heroes bottom, the Earth Shaker, believe. The top and they will come into this road. They do have the one point away from Terra, the forward Vengeance Sara. And they can't give him the life drain, which is actually doing a decent job of bringing the old rock down. So Hellraisers will collect their Aegis, it looks like, unless something crazy happens. Chemo marches in, but it looks like he'll get there in time. Three is ready. It's a Vanguard to try and ensure this road goes through completion, and indeed it will. So an Aegis claim by the Pugna. Now okay. they jump forward, they look for more, they're gonna catch out Nando and silence him. Now try to control him, swap him back, but he time walks away into the cogs though, that might spell his hey, doom! Okay. It will! The Dragon Tail gets him down. Go, go, He's go. He's got the buyback and he may have no choice but to use it. Base. This is a Pugna Dragon Knight lineup. If you don't buy back, they are likely taking a full lane of Rax here. 40 seconds on the sideline, the glyph will come out. They're probably going to need about 30 to bring this tower and the melee down would be my guess if they commit, but they get scared. The Void buys back and they will retreat. One more kill on that Void and that could be not only one, maybe two lanes of Void. Yep. Shrines are not open yet, but they uh, will take a stack. I guess if you're Hellraisers, you wait for the Dragonite ultimate on uh, to be back up again and you just go for a decisive smoke. Maybe even just smoke right now. Forget about the Dragonite ult. Doesn't need it if the voice dead. A lot of things went wrong for Nando though in that particular engagement. All the chains and went just right for Hellraiser. Even jumped into the cog for the icing on the cake. I think I think that does showcase though that like we're past the point where you can just run it around in Shadowblade and expect to ambush Hellraisers. Mm. You know, like you have to let the someone else initiate. 
or start it with the time walk, uh, or wait until the fight's already started and then counter initiate. Like, you can't just run in with Shadow Blade against a, a TI caliber team when they know you've had a Shadow Blade for almost 10 15 minutes and expect to get away with it. Yep. So, I think that gotta, gotta respect your opponents. The person that can run in soonish is the Earthshaker. He's finishing a BKB. Like, this is actually one of the tankiest uh, items you could get at this point in the game against this lineup, so. Execration looking for a it's, pickoff. It's also important just to ensure that, like, you don't just get destroyed by clockwork in the fights, right? right. Him and the Earthshaker. Between the two of them, there's just so much sustained control that you're just likely getting changed up by batteries all uh, the silence. And as I say that, well, he does get hooked out here, doesn't have that BKB yet, and will be punished once again, only reinforcing his desire to get it ASAP. Another death. Even though he died there, I really like what they're doing. They're just putting the pressure on Hellraiser. Hellraiser's supposed to be the one that's ending the game right now, but instead they're getting picked off all over the place. You know, casting Enchant Totem, blinking in to hit the tier 3. That tier 3 is actually lower, I believe. Than, uh, they're about the same. Uh, both tier 3s. And if Execration can sneak a tier 3, I think the complexion of this game changes. But Hellraisers can regroup now, potentially, as Kaiser moves in. Bottom, Nando! Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Almost revealed himself. There wasn't any follow-up, so I'm not sure Kaiser can solo kill him, but he may chase for this. He's going to blink forward. Tries to wrangle that void, who does have another time walk, gets away to safety. Team looking to cut him off if Kaiser can find him. Oh, doesn't guess right. Did use his dragon form, so that's down again. Yep. Next one, though, is going to be the mighty frost dragon. Ooh, Execration wants to defend this kill, too. They're going to smoke up. Oh, they double smoke It's even. a perfect time to do it, Lumi. There's no frost dragon. There's no dragon form at all. That is a big missing tool here in the upcoming fight. I wonder if Hellraiser expects it. There is no vision now. Ward gets dropped down. Sentry gets dropped down. They see the DK in the front. They don't want to go on him. He's got armlet DKB. He is a tanky man. On the right side. They're going to reveal their Pugna to start things off, but he does have the Aegis. Got to keep a good spread here. They know that there's so much AoE on Execration as they try to pull the Pugna in, force him out of position. Not going to happen. It was a good effort by Potato. He almost gets caught for treating. 3-3, fishing with the hook. But it won't hit Peter. Nando now sweeps around, but again, you can't just run it with Shadow Blade and expect to get an easy ambush. There are sentry wards littering this area. Somehow, though, he has snuck all the way around. He's taking the long journey, and now he drops the chrono, and then walking back into it is Milan that sets up the two here. Queen of Pain ult. should be two supports down to start the fight. Maybe more with Chemo coming in from the side. One swift ending. J4's dead. Make it three down with the Aegis falling. Now it's going to be four as they get completely slaughtered. Only the blue golden dragon stands along with swift ending around two. Can the cores bring it back? They kill off the tusk. Now they turn for the Queen of Pain. Down for a minute. They do salvage it with a buyback from the Earth Spirit, rejoining the fight as quickly as possible. And RR has to waltz away. Now, when all of that is done, Lumi, the big payload has now been expended aside from the Echo Slam. So if HR want to buyback, force the next fight, they won't have to worry about that Wombo combo. Nando is creep skipping. He wants to actually uh, draw a couple people back. Milan is looking for this kill. You gotta be careful. You could easily be solo killed by a Void. Especially with that Diffusal Blade, bashing, controlling, tries to drop the stone, but in comes the Pugna with the quick save, a little medical assist, and now the jump away. Nando, will he get stunned? Can Kaiser get a range? Oh, 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 so close. I actually think that he didn't need to blink that close because of the range Dragon Tail, but, well, Nando makes it out. That was a huge fight for Execration into the Aegis. It was just unfortunate that Pugna had the Aegis. He was alive, and then he pushed down that tier two, but... The way that the first initiation did not come cleanly, they tried to force staff the Pugna in and it didn't work. I was like, oh my god, Execration was going to They was trying to, there, yeah. to do a little Ferrari 430 band service there with the offensive force staffs, but... Wait, work out as Ooh. Potato jumps in. Oh, it's into the waiting arms of Pain. He does have the BKB. And now he's going to turn. Echo, Totem, let off your hate on that squishy little shamble of bones. And they will get the kill now. J4 could be next. He swapped for the save. And now, not one, but two going down. As they look for more. Who needs Chronosphere? Who needs Queen of Pain? Oh, certainly not Execration. Okay. They're looking for the third. Milan coming in late. Gets off a great Magnetize, but doesn't have the follow-up damage to secure any kills. So a series of chain feeds for Hellraiser while this game back. And that's without the ults being used aside from Echo. So come next fight, 
The whole combo is going to be online. Yeah, Execration says the next fight is right now. They're paying out the bottom tier three. They know it's low from the previous uh, engagements that they've been doing there. And they would love to get that a tier three down, try and get some shrine control. They might get the Rex. It's but like that... you said, they have all their ults available. Uh, they're so slow at taking objectives, though. I feel like they need a couple more kills to do that. Well, Kaiser is found right now. He might be that one important kill. They dropped the Chrono for the Dragonite. Did he get off his BKB? So he's taking maximum damage Chain here in this stun. Chronosphere. Oh my god! Walrus punch. Chain stun for days. Dude, he started the snowball when the Chrono was stilled up. Timed it perfectly as the Chrono dropped the snowball hit. My goodness. The surgical extraction right there. And no buyback on the Dragonite. That's even bigger than the other heroes being dead earlier. They all would have respawned in time, but now Execration can take this tier two. The game slipping a bit. Hellraiser's grasp is definitely loosening, and they can ill afford for that. This is uh, only their second match of the group stage, but still, you. this is the type of team that you want to beat if you want to make a deep run here at TI. Someone who came in as a qualifier. Good opportunity, though, as Milan hits the two hero boulder smash. Combine it with the hook shot. The follow up's there from Swift Ending. It's Execration's turned over, extend. They lose two after the Dragonite kill. And now Hellraiser's march back the other way. And bear in mind, there's no buyback on Tusk. <laughs> I mean, these teams don't necessarily realize that all of these buybacks are unavailable, so they may not go for high ground. But I think just look at Hellraiser's lineup. These are the type of heroes that anytime they see someone dead, they're like, well, yeah, let's go push. Let's go try and take a Rex. OK, Rocket Flare will find Raging Potato here. He does have a Force app available. How good is the Clock Hook? Not even available, so he's not going to go for it. And now, are we going to see some that power be, blast? That would be pretty dope. If it's <laughs> so good, you, you could just use it when it's on cooldown. Swift ending. Walks up, start blasting away. Nothing that you could really do about it. Just another day in the mine. And by the way, it does have a BKB now. Uh, we didn't really talk about it much, but this item will certainly help him against the void. Oh, that then? Now, that's a force step, Raging Potato! Going for the big plays. The swap save, though, is there. Now Swift Andy trying to turn things around. He does have the life drain, but he needs a good target to lock onto. The Frost Dragon with a BKB. Golden Pain raining down. An Execration put on their heels. They do have a buyback on their void. They'll have to use it now. Commitment from them, but they don't have the full combo to go with it. The Dragonite's still full HP. He is very difficult to burst. They're going to try for the chase here. Swift Andy also surviving. They really want to get something out of this void buyback. Triple buyback overall. The Chrono whips! Oh my god. Nando! A little too cheeky for his own good, perhaps. And now Kaiser's gonna get back in. Pummeling James, trying to bring him down. The stuns are there, keeping them controlled as a nice cast comes through from the backside. But Kaiser just leaps forward. And with one blink, a fell swoop takes down the quap. The cast. dragon's too strong. He finally will fall here, surrounded by four. But it took forever and a day. He does have the buyback 3-3, three, three, perhaps next on the list. Purged, controlled, likely to drop as well. Make it four. They don't need the Chrono, as it turns out. Yeah, and they have a Shrine right there to juice right back up. They could go for the Roche if they want, or they could just push lanes and go for high ground. I think Roshan is a much safer choice, especially with all of these buybacks starting to be explended. Man, this game is just all over the place. This Absolutely is a game back of, and forth. This is definitely a game of ping pong right now. For sure. Th that four staff by Jay, though. I mean, Pugna did have the BKB. He could have easily used the BKB to basically not get changed, uh, not get organed, but. For the lack of better terms, I think Pugna was just shook. Like, he just did not expect that kind of initiation. The Fissure blocked the ramp into a four staff in. Milan trying to delay this Roche, but I think ultimately it will go to Execration. Yeah, gif it, clip it. Mom, get the camera. That was that kind of moment <laughs> as Milan moves into the Roche and Wait, here. is he gonna get it? the test. He might be a little too early though. Magnetize comes out. Decent damage done, but not enough. Roche will go the way of Execration. Age is snagged as well. Probably a worthwhile risk just rolling the dice. You're only support our shaker or uh, our spirit. You're, a lot of your teammates are dead anyway. Yep. You come up clutch there, and suddenly the game is completely changed. You die. You give them a small amount of gold. Yeah. It's a so what moment. I, I'm big with you. I, I definitely think that's the type of play. It's like, oh yeah, he's feeding, but it's very much worth the risk, even if it is that two percent chance that you steal the ages. Whew. So they do get an Assault Caress here on Kaiser, and as for Pugna, his item progression is pretty much halted. Uh, as far as Execration goes, uh, they James picked up the Lincoln's BKB, so he's gone purely defensive. Have to imagine some bigger damage items are coming next, like a complete Bloodthorn, perhaps. Uh, the Void's item progression has also been fairly non-existent. 
Lumi. Yeah, he's, he's still not completed the BKB with that buyback earlier. He's been dying a lot. He's buying back, like you mentioned. Everyone's the relatively poor in this game, I feel. There's been like five or six buybacks at the very least. But the BKB is finished. Nando, because he has the Aegis, don't have to worry about buyback. In fact, the buyback is still on cooldown for a long while. So there you go. He is now a big force. Because I don't think they can kill Nando anymore unless they chainsaw on him 100 to death. And Execration have a lot of ways to interrupt that, right? With the Shaker, the Tusk Snowball, save, the yeah. Cask even. There like is last a fight, the Cask was big, but damage here. here comes Nando. Oh, he would have loved that DD rune. Under cover of Shadow Blade, he time walks in, but he only finds the bench. He then goes the other way. Actually gets two on the boundary of the Chrono. Beautiful catch and no bench in position to save them. She ran the wrong way, tried to Delta split. And now it ends up being a very ugly situation, but Kaiser is here. He's big, he's pretty bad, but they should be able to chain dash and control him. Should be, I say. Gets off two auto attacks, brings James down by about half HP. Still standing this ground. Man, if he just had one ally providing any sort of control during this time, I think he'd be taking three or four with him. Yeah, Milan had a four-man silence. I thought he was going to let loose that Magnetize. Now he drops it, but it's not going to be enough. He tries to escape. He will get hunted down, and that's going to be a four-for-one exchange by the end of the day. Huge Chronosphere by Nando. I thought he was going to miss it completely, but... First, it looked like he was only going to get the Venge. Then it looked like he was going to miss it completely. And then he got two. And then he got two, and the Venge got caught by the shards of Chemo, which kept her away. She pathed to the right. Uh, to the east rather than just being able to head directly towards the Chrono for the swap. And that ultimately meant that it was a very successful two-hero pickoff to start the fight. Yeah. Execration will get the first lane of Rax. Respawn time. Not going to help out here. 40 seconds for Dragon Knight. And uh, that's more than enough time for Execration to get out after the Raxes. Fights are just a lot easier to execute now for Execration with the BKB on the Void, the Aegis, the Cheese. Yep. I think just generally better and more reliable late game initiation as well. Like it's not single target stuff, it's huge AoE combos, also the, the Shaker. Any of these heroes can start the fight, set up a Chrono, an Echo, and if you get two with the Chrono, it doesn't matter if there's a swap, you're at least getting a kill. Uh, if you get the Venge, then you're guaranteed getting that kill. So just feels much easier for them to find kills and then transition into object objectives, whereas for Hellraisers, it's got to be close to flawless moving forward. Yeah. To me, you know, like, both people are going into a gunfight. Execration are being out, you know, the big gun. One bazookas. of them has one bullet in a BB gun, and Execration has, yeah, the, the, the automatic yeah. and the Gatling gun ready yeah. to go. So, to me, this is more like the strategy. Uh, I don't want to pin it down to the draft. It's just that Hellraiser had a very strong early to mid-game lineup, and they just could not catch the time. Execration survived it, and now they are flexing the muscle. Like you said, though, Hellraiser is still capable of winning this game, but it has to be, you know, some of the best Dota they play in their lives to, to have a shot. Yeah, I still think DK is probably the single biggest hitter in the game. It's just that most of these fights he's been chain bashed. Azito, he had a double damage rune that last fight, and he had a BKB going, and it didn't feel like... I mean, I definitely think he's doing more damage than a Void with a Shadow Blade as his result. Like, maybe on a single target, the Void's a little more annoying, but it's just like, I just don't see the Dragon I getting to hit very much. Well, I, I think what we're both saying is that neither of these heroes are hitting very hard because they're both relatively poor. Man, the Observers today are just... All right, okay, we'll, we'll ping some shrines. Let's make sure that we do a little, a little shrining of our own. Shrine up, boys. <laughs> Honestly, for sure. Hopefully someone from Valve is watching and just disables that. Where they were pink shrines? Well, that, that you can see what the other oh, okay. other broadcasters pay. If they want to pink shrines for their own stream, that's their business. But get the hell out of our stream. Oh, this could be an opportunity, smoke. though. Looking for Raging Potato. They do get the jump here. Blinking in the Dragonite almost takes him 100 to 0, but the Glimmer Cape comes through. It's going to save the day. They didn't have the detection to deal with Raging Potato. Now they try to focus him. He just wildly is going to get pushed around to the north. I think probably still goes down. 
Somehow stays alive. They've caged this dragon, controlled it beautifully. Great swap out, though. The hook interruption takes the Witch Doctor down. Kaiser, barely alive. He maybe could go for an armlet toggle. No, he's dead. And with the death of the Dragonite, the fight gets very hard from here. Nando, though, being controlled, being silenced, being stunned, dusted up. They get him anyway. He's down for 100. The Echo comes through, takes down the Skeleton Man. Execration trying to salvage this fight, but if they know that Void is unavailable, they can really look for the punish here. James is at the extra support pillar at this moment, though, as he jumps forward, finds a double kill of his own, salvaging the fight. They're lacking the damage now. Unless that Pugna wants to buy back, they might lose their whole team again. So close. The Shaker is so alive. Pugna, oh, 33 comes in. Heroic play. Gets the one kill. Looking for a second. Yule Scepter picks him up. Does he have cogs? No, he doesn't. And now Raging Potato trying to run out there with the BOTs will not is it get his it. his turn to get a triple kill. He wants Kibo as well. Out comes the Sigil. Hastrun! Oh, the Hastrun. You gotta be kidding me, Ice Frog. Oh my god. Plan calculated. Even Ice Frog loves <laughs> Pinoy Dota. So, you know why they couldn't kill the Shaker? You said there was no detection. Venge flashed the dust on the right side, but the dust ranged. Didn't hit him. It didn't hit them. That was the problem. Pugna was trying to chase him down, but he had BKB, so the life stream wasn't doing anything. And for the rest of the fight, that Shaker was such a nuisance. The thing is, he actually ran to the right. He ran into the sentry. They almost killed him while he was under the sentry. And he forced that. And then he forced that to yeah, the yeah, north. Just... They literally went right around the Rosie, like, just... You know, heading all the way up and around, chasing him. They Meanwhile, the Dragon Knight lost like three quarters of his health just being completely chain stunned, maledicted, tanking a full duration death ward practically. I, I think the problem for, for that half of the fight was the fact that Pugna wasn't there. Like, he was chasing a Shaker, he wanted the kill, but honestly, the he Shaker... He should be killing the Dragon Knight during that time? Or just blasting yeah. them. Like, Shaker tanked for a good five seconds. Imagine if there was a Pugna there, the crep blast with Veil. Boy, he at least kills, you know, Boy or something, right? Like, it's... Hellraiser, I don't know how many smokes that they have left. Uh, they don't have anybody, uh, any heroes carrying it. So that, that is going to be a concern. I think Hellraiser needs to start the fight like they have, like trying to blow up somebody in the front or somebody first. Because I don't, if they don't have the, the start that they did uh, in these team fights, they're not going to come close to winning. More Lincoln Spheres. Void is not going to go for one. Everybody buying tomes. Queen of Pain, very close to the level 25, so she is going to be unkillable, essentially. Void, I imagine he's going to pick up the plus 600 uh, time walk range. That seems definitely the more popular of the two. Yeah. And I think the better choice in this game as well, right? Not much. It's just always range. useful, right? Yeah. It basically means you have a free blink dagger that can't be put on cooldown at that point. Iris Smokes, Radiant has a war to check it out. The Dragon Knight's the one they're going to find first, but Kaiser does manage to get off his Dragon form. Will he BKB in time? Does he realize how many heroes are committing? In goes Nando. The swap out, though, by J4. Keeps Swift any alive. Now he can maybe heal him. No, he decrepifies him, puts him under for the moment that the Queen of Pain on is there. A dagger through the heart of Hellraiser's. That's Swift ending now, trying to stand his ground, deal with that Faceless Void, does get up to the Crypt fight, but finally it ends, and in goes the Bash, in comes the kill, down he will go, and now they can turn their attention to the Dragonite. Fight after fight, it's just Execration finding those early key pickoffs, and then almost overrunning Hellraiser's position, but perhaps not this time. Hookshot comes through, it's 3-3 again to the rescue, he was there early, and he's delivering now, even later on, as the Glimmer Cape from Chemo will end. Scepter, try and stall it out a little bit longer. Now the stun comes through and down. Kimo will go. Another triple for 3-3. Three, three, a 4-3 four three victory for Hellraiser. What is happening? You don't expect a Dragon Knight Clockwork to be carrying 45 minutes in the game. Now, granted, I think we're kind of operating under the traditional lenses of these heroes. The talents definitely help, right? You just don't expect a Clockwork to be outputting that much damage, but he does have the plus 40 battery assault damage. He has the longer duration on so the one, battery assault. I mean, one battery assault when there's no BKBs is dealing, what, like 1,500 damage or something? Yep, and theory. you have 100% uptime on your battery assault as well. You basically have it running as long as you have mana, and he has enough mana. The surprising thing is that Dragon Knight is able to do this much. He also does have the egg, so now you you have the 10 second hook shots coming out throughout the fight. Sorry, 12 yep. seconds. Uh, and constantly can be interrupting and resetting these kids. He is the disabling machine, the one man wrecking through by himself. And now it's Hellraiser into the pit. If you ask me 45 minutes in the game, who scales better? I would have said hands down level 25 pop. You got the boy that's scaling. 
I, I mean, this this Dragonite's about to get a Daedalus. I think he is easily the hardest hitter in the game, even if Pop has a little bit more net worth uh, once he completes that. He's gonna grab the cage here. I, I guess a big part, big part of the Quap is that she has about 10k net worth invested into items that don't help Le you. Yeah, Link gets BKB. Yeah, it doesn't help you when you're getting wrecked. Like, okay, Milan got clipped. I'm not sure whether James was paying attention. Evidently not. Silence the. Oh, he misses the hook. Could have been huge. That's with the bench coming into position instead. James is going to silence that Earth Spirit. Thinks about to go. Char are going to cluster up now. Marching down mid once more under the breach. Can they break the base this time? A Dragonite pug the lineup. Still in the game. Still looking Somehow. for their first lane of rags. At 48 minutes, something you really do not expect to see. By this point, either they've won or the game's over, is how most would have predicted. But indeed, they fight on. Kaiser on the high ground. He's going to eat the Maledict. The Rain Track's now there. And meanwhile, the Chronosphere committed. It's going to catch up that pesky pug up with the swap out at the final hour. The Queen of Panel not quite connected on Swift Ending, so he stays alive. They still focus here. Eyes on the prize, but the Rex is a down. Swift Ending man moded in, giving him the sucky sucky, but he hasn't finished off the melee. And now he's going to go. Down. Aegis has been expended. That's four dead with the Aegis. Likely to be a fifth. I think Dragonite didn't even get up the cheese that fight. Indeed, Le Fromage still in his inventory. Might have been deep backpacking it when he fought. No, so he hit six. He had it the uh, whole time. The he had it the whole time. He wanted to basically get the most value out of it. Raging Potato recognizing says, I'm going to go in with a solo Echo Slam. They and have killed him. one buyback, Lumi, aside from this clock. Can Clock and Dragonite do it again? I Dragonite has to, but the problem is he's going to come back as a pitiful human form. I'm not sure whether he can make the defense. I mean, at this point, you just buy back, right? It doesn't matter if you don't finish the, the Daedalus. Uh, at this point, Earthshaker yeah. is your siege engine with that enchant totem. Constantly dishing out huge chunks of damage to these towers. Gives it another wallop, takes it down. Execration right back in the game. Hellraiser's overplaying their hand and getting punished. They saw blood in the water, but Execration, it was only a ruse. A breathe fire to try and slow it down. Two melee racks have fallen. Well, if anyone hits that one, there yep. you go. And now looking for the Megas, and with that, potentially the game. There are four alive, but fighting 4v5. Here, if anybody dies, they won't have the buyback, so they have to be cautious about how they take these fights. The Dragonite blinking in, but he will get quickly dealt with. The uh -oh. BKB from Nando. He's the Bashes cheese. are coming out. He needs to get off that cheese. The BKB do something, but he can't. He's controlled for ages. They had to tap the shrine to try and keep it alive. Now the BKB comes out for Kaiser. He turns the fight around, but he's not finding kills. Nando resets. Now the bubble and trouble, perhaps, for Hellraiser's Mounty. They're going to lose the Earth Spirit. Dead. 60. No buyback there either. Kaiser controlled in the shards. Now the snowball coming through. James will blink out. Just kiting the dragon. Focusing on objectives. Nando surges back in. He wants to throw the tower. He's going to take it down. Tier 3 fallen. Looking for the melee next. James will go unstoppable. And it seems the end is nigh. Hellraisers has been slain and cast back. Oh my the god. Abyss from whence <laughs> they came. It felt like they had clawed their way back into a game they had no business being in. But execration. Put a stop. Well, both teams, right? Execration looked like they were in so much trouble early on. They kind of withstand that. They were able to take down the tier three on the bottom, slowly whittling Hellraiser down. And Hellraiser, all of a sudden, it was like clockwork, and and Dragonite just came online. If there's anything item-wise for Hellraiser, maybe a Vlad's would have done them a lot because that Dragonite, especially towards the later half of the fights, he was just right-clicking, right-click. His HP slowly drops. If he had any lifestyle items. I think he might have been able to out-sustain Execration, but... Execration, they had a very rough day one, starting one and three. They did have to face one of the premier uh, LGD squads, who are still, I believe, undefeated here so far. TI, maybe that's changed as the day's action has begun with four streams simultaneously. But now two and three, Hellraiser's one and two. We'll see if Execration can make it to 2-0, or if Hellraiser's are going to battle back and force it to a 1-1 draw after this. Stick around.